Hi guys, I wanted to pop on because I am pretty sure I might get some questions regarding developmental pediatricians and why I went. And a little backstory, I guess, first is when Ashen was around four years old, I started learning that there were parents um, who were taking their kids to see developmental pediatricians. And this was when I was part, well, I am part of, but I was reading the Apraxia Kids Facebook group and I found out that's where I first heard about developmental pediatricians. And I didn't start to realize they were different from your regular pediatric pediatrician until I started asking more questions. And it seemed that these developmental pediatricians seemed to know about apraxia, dyspraxia. And these were terms I felt like I had to learn all on my own. My pediatrician never mentioned anything like this to me. And so I went to her and asked if I could get a referral for a developmental pediatrician. And she seemed very offended and asked, what could they do that she couldn't? And unfortunately, you know, this was five years ago. At that time, I didn't know enough about <laughs> about it to make my case. So uh, she just said, I can do whatever a developmental pediatrician can do. If you want an MRI, I can order an MRI. If you want a referral to neurology, I can give you a referral to neurology. You know, just let me know. We uh, ended up doing some blood work, those initial genetic testing that people get done screening for things like Down syndrome, Fragile X, a microarray, uh, and kind of left it at that. So, you know, now Ashen's nine, and I, last year in February, put her on the list for the developmental pediatrics unit because in Denver, those pediatricians only work at the hospitals, and unfortunately, there's this humongous wait, which at this time, it well, at least at the time that I had put her on last year, it was a year. So I knew that. So we finally got in on a cancellation today, and I've been asked by a couple of people texting why I chose to take her and what they really could do for me. And honestly, I think I've done everything, um, kind of sidestepped the whole process. I'm going to link an article that Apraxia Kids has on their website that explains kind of the definition of what a developmental pediatrician does. And um, basically, they are just more knowledgeable about all those developmental disorders, which is exactly why they know about dyspraxia and apraxia. And the developmental pediatricians will make referrals to genetics and to the rehab clinic and to maybe get a sleep study or to neurology and... I've basically sidestepped and done all of that myself. <laughs> so at this point, I think I just went in because I have been on a wait list. And, you know, if I want to be on a wait list for a year, I might as well go in. So that's why I, I went in. But uh, I was only able to see a psychologist. I wasn't able to even see a developmental pediatrician, which was the whole reason I made that appointment. And she said that now to see it a developmental pediatrician, it's two years out because they went from eight to four developmental pediatricians. <laughs> and so she could put me on the wait list for that, which again, I accepted. I don't really know at this time if I need a developmental pediatrician. I mean, I have Ashlyn's genetic diagnosis. I have all the comorbid diagnoses that go under it. Although I just always want to make sure that I'm crossing my I's and crossing my T's and dotting my I's. So anyway, uh, the appointment, just to give a little overview, was um, actually, you know, awesome. Ashlyn's amazing. On paper, you know, she looks like a really impacted kid because she is. <laughs> I'm not making it up, I promise. Uh, she, you know, has... That, you know, she's in occupational therapy, physical therapy, tutoring, all these things for a reason. And it's not, you know, because she's not struggling. <laughs> so um, on paper, she does look uh, more severe, but it's pretty awesome to have her walk into a room. And I could just tell the psychologist, uh, you know, kind of had, as I guess anyone would, had her, already had her opinion of Ashlyn. And, you know, as I she did talk to her a little bit, and then as I started talking to her and explaining things, I could just tell she was a little guarded. They have to deal with a lot of parents who are in denial, so I get that, and they I think they feel like part of their job is to help parents not be in denial. Um, so I could tell that she was kind of doing that, but Ashlyn ended up like 
blowing her socks off. I mean, Ashlyn was social, of course, like she always is, and um, it was pretty amazing to watch. Uh, Ashlyn had a lot of scripts when she was younger, so around five years of age, four or five years of age, for her to engage in a conversation with someone, it would, she would say hi, and then, um, you know, they might say something, but she would turn it back on them and say, what are you doing? And this, what are you doing became stuck because it was so powerful and she could go anywhere and ask someone, what are you doing? And get immediate feedback with a big explanation. And there she had someone engaged in a social uh, interaction with her, which is what she craves. And so a lot of work has been done with her school, SLP, to break her of that and to really ask more specific questions, more socially appropriate questions. And she rocked it. She never asked a, what are you doing? She, um, yeah, asked, are you drinking coffee or tea? You're typing on your computer, aren't you? Boring. Uh, do you have a lot of work to do? <laughs> are you going to see more parents today? It was awesome. And the person was even like, wow, she talks so clearly uh, on paper. She still, you know, has a di those diagnoses of dysarthria and apraxia. And, you know, when she's tired and things, she uh, doesn't speak as clearly. But, um, you know, that was awesome. And uh, as the appointment progressed, as the appointment progressed, she actually said that Ashlyn was socially gifted and it just honestly felt so good to have this person that I know came in with their preconceived judgments of Ashlyn based on paper to have her say that is like, go Ashlyn, you know, like she is finally starting to be able to prove herself, you know, like I've always seen that in her, um, uh, I found a team that sees that in her, and I actually explained that to the psychologist. I said, um, you know, she's got an amazing team at school finally, and um, the psychologist said something that I thought was so beautiful that I've never heard put this way before, but it's so true. She said that, you know, a person, she's seen a few kids like Ashlyn before, and Ashlyn, you know, has this desire to learn and to try and to please, and she, you know, wants to do all of these these things so badly and you know this relationship develops between her and her teachers where the teacher's job is to help Ashlyn improve and to learn and in turn her eagerness and uh, you know willingness to learn and try um, makes them better because they have to come up with more skilled and creative ways to learn how to to be able to teach her and so I just really, I wrote both her SPED teacher and her speech uh, language pathologist a really long text message just thanking them because, you know, right now, and I never asked for this, her speech language pathologist is giving her two 30-minute individual sessions, which is so hard to get in this day and age, and her uh, special ed teacher has been pouring you know, her heart out into helping Ashlyn meet her IEP goals, which are about to come up um, in March. And Ashlyn is doing it. She always rises to the occasion, but she needs people to believe in her. And that really, how do you measure that um, in a teacher? So anyway, oh, I can't believe I got emotional. So annoying. Um <laughs> Uh, so yeah, if you have any questions about developmental pediatricians, I'm going to put that link in the comments and, um, as always feel free to comment and I can answer your questions or write you back when I can. So hope everyone has a good day. Bye.